It's the kind of cake that wants to make you fall down to your knees and thank gosh you're alive. Hello everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you are well wherever you are in the world. Today, we're making something wholesome, delicious, comforting, and just darn right amazing in every way. It's not me in the form of a pudding. Well, maybe it is. Uh, we're doing a lemonade Swiss roll. And you're probably like, what the? Because one of the first times ever, generally all the recipes I do here on the channel are me trying and attempting things for the first time, being like, oh, will it work or, or, or whatever. But this is something that I do make from time to time. It's kind of like my own creation that we have every four or five weeks on a Sunday after roast dinner, typically. Um, and sometimes it can look horrendous because there is a little bit of skill of rolling it up and making sure it doesn't crack. But when we have it after roast it, we don't really care. But for here today, I'm gonna to do my best to make it look awesome. It's very simple and kind of like a twist on a classic Swiss roll, which is generally just jam. But I know in uh, different parts of the world, they all have their own versions of a Swiss roll. I think in Asia, they have a much lighter sponge, which seems to be the thing with the whole jiggly cheesecake thing. And it's just an amazing thing. And my girls have just gone out for two hours. Uh, when they come back at lunchtime, my aim, they don't know. These are the ingredients down here. They're so minimal. They don't know uh, that I'm making this. So hopefully they'll walk in and be like, oh my God, you made the lemon. They, they love it. Um, and it is awesome. It's got a little bit of tang in there. I do a lemonade syrup on it as well. Completely optional. But one thing that you do need, I mean, they call them a Swiss roll tin. Um, I don't tend to have one. I have just got like a standard rectangular one, which is 20 by 30 centimeters like that. That is absolutely ideal. So we'll give that a nice little wash, line it, and that will set you on your way. It's gonna be stonking. And the first, one of the first times ever, it should be quite easy. So I'm like, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I make this a lot, but sometimes when you roll it up, you let it cool, it can crack. I, I'm gonna try my best to nail it. But before that, two things. One, this isn't my own t-shirt. People are like, oh, where can I get that? It's just something I bought years ago. And let me tell you, when I wear it in the supermarket, you do get some funny looks. Like, is, that, is that a grown adult wearing that? Yeah, but I think it's quite cool. And during the video, we actually announced the winner of the veggie prep kit. Some of you guys are tweeting me images of like where you watch my videos, for example, in a cab truck or on a TV and iPad at the same time. There is a winner, so we'll announce that. But let's first of all, get this thing baking. All right. So this is our uh, tin. Like I say, it is 20 centimeters by 30, just approximately. As long as it's got a lip on it, it's normally all right with me. That is in there like that, nice and lined and ready. And just to one side, whilst you've got that out, get a piece of baking parchment just roughly the size of the tin and have that to one side, okay? Because that's gonna help our sponge later. It's quite fun. Yeah, I'm not sure why I put poppy seeds. I mean, I love the combination of lemon and poppy seeds. That's why I do it. And I never thought I'd do a video of it, but I just thought, hey, I love this so much, I wanna share it. And you can make it as zingy as you want, as we'll come on to later. But in this big bowl, I get some sugar and some eggs. So there's like nothing stopping you doing like, maybe like a coffee one. Oh, that'd be amazing, like a latte. Oh or passion fruit, anything like that, go to town on it. And if you try it, send me photos. Of the Swiss roll that is, you cheeky thing. So all I'm doing is whisking together the sugar and the eggs, but as you can see like that at the moment, it's a little dark. If you keep going for a couple of minutes, it gets paler to do that. And I have no idea why that bowl's there. It's really annoying me. All right. Check the difference in that, nice and bubbly too. Right, flavor town. Yeah, so instead of using uh, lemon extract, ooh, and normally when I make this, I just like chuck it all together and don't even think. This is about a tablespoon of lemonade and we're gonna use this as well uh, to make a syrup that we drizzle on the sponge at the end as well. Oh, cheeky. And you can use that instead of lemon extract, gives it a little bit of zing, a teeny bit of carbonation, not a massive thing, uh, but then, the flavor of the lemon really comes from the lemon zest. Gives it a real nice smell as well. So I'm just zesting a whole lemon. Ooh. Wow, that smells citrus. Nice. Oh yeah, I think an actual bit of zest might have gone up my nose. That's fine, that's my problem, not yours. Look at that, all right? It looks a little bit more interesting now. We will quickly give that a whisk, but to be honest, I've never really measured out how many poppy seeds I normally add, so I'll go with that initially, which is about a tablespoon. I'll just quickly whisk it through. <laughs> Looks like passion fruit for about two seconds, then the bubbles come back. <laughs> get yourself a sieve. Uh, <laughs> this is optional, but we wanna get it nice and light and airy. So this is a flour. We might need a little bit more, sometimes I do, uh, and the baking powder. Boop, 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 boop. Gonna go in there, do its thing, and hopefully, well, it normally does. Thicken this up. Oh yeah, oh yeah. 
but just try not to overfold it. I just had a couple of little traces of flour there. As soon as they've gone, we are left with this super good batter. Look at that. You it looks like frog spawn or something, but honestly, the smell is so good. The taste is horrendous, but it smells great. All right, I'm just waiting for my uh, oven to preheat, but just off camera, uh, we're gonna make our syrup now, which is nice and easy. We take another, ca literally a can uh, of lemonade. So what's that, like 320 ml, something like that? 60 grams of caster sugar. See, that's having a right old fizz up in there. <laughs> Amazing. That is a lemon that I have just removed the zest from because we'll have that later. Uh, but what we'll do is get the juice from a lemon. Oh my gosh, there's a gadget for that. But that's why you really do want that sugar in there and the sugar in the lemonade because the, the sharpness of the lemon juice is pretty darn naughty indeed. All right, my oven's ready, but look at this thing. We're not gonna bake the sponge straight away. I've learned if you put the sponge in, you kind of need to work fast afterwards. So we're gonna get the syrup on the go, make sure we're all prepped before baking it because it doesn't go in there for very long. I feel like I actually know what I'm doing today for a change. We're just gonna warm this up and it is gonna reduce down to a syrup. Syrup, baby. Try and reduce it by about a half or even two thirds if you can, all right? So hopefully you can see just in the corner of your eye there, um, I wasn't even looking what I was doing then. I was trying, I was looking at the camera rather than the pour and that could have been very dangerous. You could press it with a spatula if you want or give it a little shimmy like this. And that goes for 10 minutes. It may be a couple more minutes more. We just want it nice and light and spongy. And then we chuck it down on our piece down there. Nice. Now we make the filling, and this is a uh, lemon curd, so a, a jar of lemon curd from the shops where you can make your own. Now, of course, that's fine as it is, but what I like to do, this is some uh, sherbet from a shop. Uh, we got it from a sweet called Dip Dab, or you can make your own with, I think it's bicarbonate of soda, citric acid, and icing sugar. But this does help to give it a little bit of zing. This is kind of like our version of the jam filling, okay? Now, Basically what's gonna happen is we're gonna take the sponge out and we're gonna flip it down to be able to peel off the back of the paper. But you have sugar normally on here. But what I like to do is sometimes add a little bit of the sherbet as well. It's up to you if you do it, but you can mix that. You could just put all the sherbet in there as well so it absorbs into the sponge. But I do like that coarse texture that the sugar gives you. So I'm gonna do a bit of both today. So that's right. On this uh, piece of baking parchment, I'm gonna do a mix of the two. That's just normal sugar, okay? Sugar bay. It's opened a restaurant in England, right? Everyone's like tweeting me, Barry, you gotta go. And a lot of people have been saying, Barry, did you ever tell that story about Salt Bay? Yes, I did. It involved the crowdfund for the pizzeria, so I know Kickstarter and Patreon backers definitely know that story, but I will share it with everyone uh, fairly soon. But if he's in the country, I don't wanna be doing that. Loads of people are like, oh, Barry, have you had a legal battle with Salt Bay? No, it doesn't, it involves him, but it doesn't at all. So there's nothing like, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Like, oh my gosh, is he gonna sue you for doing that? No. So whilst we've made that, and to be honest, I have done it a little bit messy, uh, you can just get your pan shape and prepare that ahead of time so you're not wasting it. But hey, I like making a bit of a mess. Uh, hopefully you can see there's a slightly more amber color where we've got a little bit of caramelization going on in the syrup here. You can see how much it's reduced down. So I'm happy with that. I'm taking that off the heat to let it cool. So a syrup like that, you can pour it on any sort of freshly baked sponge, a bit like a drizzle, you can put holes in it or just pour it on and it will soak in. It's a little bit temperamental trying to do it with a Swiss roll when you're rolling it because it can make it heavier and damper and make the sponge break, which it can do anyway. I'm kind of prepared for that. Top tip, if you make a Swiss roll and it fails when you roll it, cover it in buttercream and you've got yourselves a chocolate log, even if it's February, okay? That's fine. Oh! Right, nice. Let's get you out. Nice golden color on it. Teeny bit of a patch there, that's okay. We'll take that. Oh yes, 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 yes. This is kind of the fun part, is we have to aim and drop. <laughs> and just peel that back slowly. Remember, it is still warm. Oh my gosh. Yes. So you can like move this around now to make it more comfortable. What I tend to find is if you lose a little bit of a lip here of the paper, and then just slowly, do do do. All right, just slowly roll like that. Oh my gosh. Okay, you can't really see it too well. <laughs> if I cut here a little bit, that's not important. What is important is gravity, in the words of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Get down, get to the chopper. Um, 
we want to cool this fully in this position because then it gives us the ability to unravel it, but it's used to being rolled up. So let's get this fully cooled and we'll have a Swiss roll. I don't really ever show you what goes on <laughs> this side of the counter. Um, look, this is the Dalmio sauce that I used the other day from that bacon lasagna thing. And that's my coffee that I've half drunk. Uh, I tend to just have a blue cloth and wipe down as I go. Uh, but yeah, anyhow, this is looking good. Okay, that has been a solid hour and this is cold and there'll probably be... Yes. <laughs> Merry Christmas! What I wanted to say, another thing to make sure, make sure you don't over bake the sponge because that's gonna make it tougher to roll up and it can crack. Another thing you can do, I didn't do that, is you can put a rolling pin in to help give you that curvature. And finally, uh, rest it on the actual seam as well, okay? So that's where you want it to kind of sit so it kind of stops rolling. And um, this is set lovely. Because what you wanna do, you wanna unravel it, but you don't wanna take it all the way back. Uh, see how it's got that sort of curve in it now? Nice, you see? <laughs> got like a magic carpet, yeah? But what we want to do is take this and we just unravel it slightly, take our lemon curd mixture and start to push it on there. And some lemon zest. We'll save some for the top as well. And then we roll it, okay? So it might get messy. There's a lot of volume there. It's gonna push it out a little bit, you see? Oh my gosh. Oh! All right, folks, there it is. There's a little bit of a gap there, but actually, as it settles, more will ooze out. It's a huge log of lemony goodness. So this is that syrup, and uh, it kind of crystallizes onto the sponge. Oh my gosh, so good. See what it's doing there? Oh, the little bubbles, yes, yes, yes. Good old dust of icing sugar. And that's just gonna stick to that syrup as well. So good, so good. Sweet Caroline. Lemon zest on top. There we go, folks. The lemonade Swiss roll. Oh, there's a bit of a gap there. If that happens and you're doing a video, you can just do that. <laughs> Outstanding. I just, oh my gosh, look at that. Oh, baby. Yeah. Tangy, lemony, poppy seedy, cakey goodness. Ah! It's the kind of cake that wants to make you fall down to your knees and thank gosh you're alive. It's so good. If you love lemons, if you hate lemons, probably not going to want to make it, are you? Just like the tang, the lemonade syrup as well, drenching it. Amazing. Uh, I hope you try this recipe out. I'll wait for the girls to get back so you can have a little taste of that. I'll put loads of tips uh, in the write-up. But for me to finally do a recipe that I tend to make regularly, it's actually kind of cool and I'm really happy I've made them a lot worse. Sometimes they crack and that's all part of the fun. Give it a go. And I'll see you next time. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's mustache, goatee, maybe all three. A few of you got sent in some amazing photos. Obviously, being on the TV when you show the videos does freak me out. Uh, Probable Prime uh, put me in a virtual reality scene in a temple, which was very cool. I like that. There was some uh, cats going on watching TV uh, with Natalie. There was a moon base on alert. Look at this. This is me on a... Oh. There was the classic TV there like that uh, from Tom Crabtree. James Clare uh, watching the TV and the iPad simultaneously. The same <gasps> video. That. that was pretty cool. This is Daniel from Germany. He literally made the account for this. Uh, watch the video in a lorry. Very nice. Look at that. Like in that. a lorry? What? Yeah. I quite like that, it kind of freaks me out on top of someone's mantelpiece. Next to Nightmare on Elm Street and Out of Time. Uh, oh my. Yeah, that's from Heavy Duty Doc. Ian Rolf, I'm actually watching you on my Commodore 64. I don't know if that's a Photoshop, but that's, that's pretty cool. What's a Commodore 64? But the winner is this one, Lufferov. So how about in a 1700 seat theatre? Look, he's literally what? playing my video. How, how did you do that? In a Where's cinema. Well, he obviously works in a cinema or something like that. Uh, so if you want to get in touch, you can have a veggie prep kit. <laughs> it really does freak us out. I mean, going from like desktops and just PCs back in the day when YouTube first started to cinema, cinema screens. I'm sure you don't watch it in there often, but thanks to everyone that submitted those photos. We'll do some more giveaways like that soon. So yes, enjoy the cake. Yes, All right. delicious. Cheers, guys. Give it a go. See you later.